Section 16.1, line integrals. Suppose that you're going to go from the point A to the point B. Perhaps you are on a hike through the forest and you decide to take this path right here. It also could be that you decide you want to get there as quickly as possible, so you go along a straight line. So the arc length right here would be longer than a straight line. The straight line, of course, is the shortest, fastest path. So even these, though these are called line integrals, it might be that you go along some curve like this called curve C, or it could be that the curve is a straight line. So if this was something like you're carrying a heavy backpack and you wanna know how much work is it gonna to take to hike up this mountain, down this valley to get to this point, it's gonna take more work to do this than if you just made a straight line. But there are situations where you can just use a straight line. For example, let's suppose that you bought Apple stock price when it was just $100 a share. That was a good choice because right now, Apple stock price is $460 a share. So if you bought it at 100, you sold it at 460, you make $360 profit. And it doesn't matter if it went up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. As long as you sold it at 460, you still get your money. Okay, so let's say that you've got, or you can create the parametric functions that give you the curve C. Whether it's a curvy line or a straight line, there's the parametric functions. And let's say that that's for T going from lowercase a to b. So it takes this amount of time to get from point A to point B. Then the line integral. So integrate over C, and then you'd have some function which is telling you how much weight you're carrying or how much work you're doing, something like that, or how much money you're making over here. And then we're gonna integrate with respect to S, which is arc length. So this is basically saying, what's the function times how far did you go? Since we have what X and Y equals, we can plug them in right here. So this would turn into the integral from A to B and then f of g of t, and then h of t. And then, how do you find arc length? Well, when you have a parametric function, that is the square root of, you take the derivative of each one, you square them, add it together, take the square root, that's arc length. So this is what we're going to be using in this section. And sometimes you're going to be given the curve and sometimes you need to find it yourself. So for example number one, integrate this simple function, x plus y ds. And we'll do two parts, part a so we're going to go from this point, negative 1, to this point, positive 1. So we go from this point to this point. All along the while, you add the x and the y values, and then you multiply by the arc length. So for part A, we're going to do a straight line. So we need the parametric functions for this straight line. Well, notice in here, the y value is always equal to 0. So that part's easy for the parametric equation. And then I could just say x equals t and have t range from negative 1 to 1. And that will create this line segment right there. So integrate, and then it's going to go from negative 1 to positive 1. Then just substitute these two values. So it's going to be t plus 0. And then for the arc length, take the derivative here, that's 1, square it. Take the derivative here, that's 0, square it, put it inside square root, and then we're ready to integrate. So this is just a 1 
So integrate t times 1, so that equals t squared over 2, evaluated from negative 1 to 1. So that would be 1 half minus, when you substitute the negative 1 and square it, it becomes positive 1 half. So it's 1 half minus 1 half, it equals 0. Now this one has no physical interpretation that I know of. I just wanted to make up an easy problem. So in here, I can't say that's the amount of profit you made off your Apple stock or anything like that. Just practicing. Okay, part B. Still go from this point, negative 1 to positive 1, but this time make it a half of a circle. And specifically, I want you to go this direction. So go from negative 1 to positive 1, but follow the top half of this circle. So how do you find the parametric equations that will give you a circle? Use sine of t for x and cosine of t for y. That way when you have x squared plus y squared, so square both sides of the equation, this side would say, and you add them together, this side would say x squared plus y squared equals, this side would say sine squared plus cosine, which is 1. So this creates a circle with radius 1. So I already put that in the calculator, sine and cosine. And then I want it to start right here at negative 1. So when does sine equal negative 1? Well, that is negative pi over 2. So I'm going to go from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And then watch the graph. It's going to start on the left and then go over, create the top half of the circle, and there we go. So that's from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. Okay, so then we need to integrate from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. It's still the function x plus y. So x plus y means sine plus cosine. And then the square root, take the derivative here, which is cosine, and square that. So that's cosine squared. Take the derivative here, which is negative sine, square that, it's going to be positive sine squared. So this right here just equals 1. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Square root of that's 1. So we just need to integrate these two. So the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. And for cosine, the antiderivative is sine and then evaluate from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So cosine at pi over 2 and negative pi over 2, that equals 0. So this is going to contribute nothing to the answer. Then we just need what is sine pi over 2 and then minus sine negative pi over 2. Well, sine of pi over 2 Remember I did the interval from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So right here, when you trace and you put pi over 2, it then says the x value, or in other words, sine, is equal to 1. And sine at negative pi over 2 is equal to negative 1. And so this one equals 2. So depending on the function, it is possible that you could take a different path and you would still get the same answer. But depending on the function, it could be that you go from point A to point B, but if you take a different path, then you'll get a different answer. For the next example, let's integrate something a little more challenging. So evaluate the line integral over C and this is going to be x and the square root of y 
with respect to the arc length. And then C is a line segment from 1 comma 2 to 3 comma 8. So 1 comma 2, 3 comma 8 is this line segment. So we need to know the equation of this line. So we could use rise over run. So this is a rise of 6. This is a run of 2. That means the slope equals 6 divided by 2. That's going to be 3. I could then go y minus the y value of 2 equals slope times x minus the x value of 1. So what's that? 3x minus 3. And then I'll need to add 2 to both sides. So that means y equals 3x minus 1. But what I need is the parametric form of the equation. So then I could go just let x equal t, plug that in right here, and then y has to equal 3t minus 1. All right, now what are the values for t? So if this is a 1, so I'm trying to start at this point and go to this point. So I need to start at this point, which means x equals 1. So that means t equals 1. And if I plug a 1 in here, it's going to say 3 minus 1 is 2, so that point is correct. So t is going to start at 1 and then go to what? Well, this says that x equals 3, so that's going to be a 3. And if you plug it in here, 3 times 3 is 9, minus 1 is 8, so that's correct. Okay, now we have the setup. Now I just need to plug this in for x, plug this in for y. So integrate from 1 to 3, x is going to be just t, y is going to be the square root of 3t minus 1, and then for the arc length. So that would be the derivative of this, which is 1, and then square that. Next, we need the derivative of this, which is 3. Square that. And then we're ready. So let's see. This is just going to be 9, 10. So that's going to be the square root of 10. And the square root of 10, I could just factor that out. And then for this part, I would use u substitution. So over here, let u be what's inside the radical, 3t minus 1. The derivative of that is going to be just 3 times dt. And then this one has an extra t right here. So what I'll need to do is solve for t. So it's going to be u and then add 1 to both sides and divide by 3. And that's what t equals. And dt equals one-third du. So this part right here is going to become u plus 1 over 3. This is going to be the square root of u, or u to the 1 half. And then for the dt, I need to put one-third times du. So I'm going to put it like this. I'm going to take this one-third and factor it out. And then I need to do some algebra. Go ahead and distribute this. I was just thinking I should have factored this out also. You know what, I could just do that right now. I'm going to take this and factor it out. So now I've got 3 times 3 in the denominator. All right, then what's left? So this would be u to the 1 and a half, or u to the 3 halves, plus u to the half. 
And for right now, I just leave the limits off because the one and the three stand for T. I should have left the limits off right here as well. Let's see, the antiderivative for this will be u to the five halves and then divide by five halves. The antiderivative here will be u to the three halves and then divide by three halves. And then I would change it back to t. So we would have the square root of 10 over nine and then two fifths. So replace the u with three t minus one. And then evaluate from one to three. So let's see, when you substitute a three this is going to be 9 minus 1 is 8. And then 8 is to the 5 halves power. So this will also be an 8 raised to the 3 halves power. Minus, when you substitute a 1, this will be 3 minus 1, so that's 2. So then it's going to be 2 fifths, and then 2 is raised to the 5 halves power. And then finally, when you do this one, it's going to be minus this one also. And this one is also going to be a 2, so minus 2 thirds. And then 2 is to the 3 halves power. Okay, so finally... I'm ready to use the calculator. All right, we've got the square root of 10 divided by 9 and then 2 fifths times 8 raised to the 5 halves and plus 2 thirds and then 8 raised to the 3 halves. and minus two-fifths, two is raised to the five-halves, and minus two-thirds, two is raised to the three-halves. So in total, it equals 29.284. And now for example number three. Suppose that it's the integral of x plus z. So now we're in three dimensions. And then c it's a line segment from the point one comma two comma three to six comma seven comma eight. So in three dimensions, how do you find the equation of a line? Well, first you need a vector, so subtract these two. So six minus one will be five. Seven minus two will be five. And eight minus three will be five. Or you could even factor out the five and we don't need the factor of five. You just need to know what direction does this vector go? Well, it goes the same direction as this vector, but this way I've got smaller numbers to work with. Then for the equation of a line, I could do the parametric form like this and take the numbers from the vector and put those in front of t. So one times t, one times t, and one times t. And then Right here go the numbers for a point that it goes through, like one, two, three. And what are the values for t? Well, when t equals zero, that's gonna be the point one, two, three. So it's gonna start there when t equals zero. Now, if I need this to be a six, this is gonna to have to be five plus one. 
and five plus two will be seven, and five plus three will be eight. So t goes from zero to five. Okay, so we're integrating from zero to five. This particular, particular one said take x plus z, so t plus one plus t plus three. And the formula for arc length is basically the same. You take the derivative of each one of these, the x, the y, and the z, then square that and add them all together. Well, the derivative here is going to be 1, and here it's 1, and here it's 1. So it's going to be 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 1 squared. So let me just simplify this a little bit. So this is going to be the square root of 3, which I could factor out. This is going to be 2t plus 4. And then we could integrate. So the square root of 3 will just stay there. The antiderivative of 2t, that's just going to be t squared. And for 4, the antiderivative will be 4t. Evaluated from 0 to 5. Oops, I should have written square root of 3. My brain was thinking ahead to this 5 right here. So this is 5 squared, which is 25. This would be 4 times 5, so that's 20. And when you substitute 0, that's going to be 0, and that's going to be 0. So this is 45 times the square root of 3. Okay, now example number four. So do the line integral, and this one's going to be x plus the square root of y minus z squared. And the path is going to go from 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1. So that, if that was the end of the question as presented, it would be very, very, very similar to the last one that I just did. But instead, we're going to go along this route. We're going to take two paths to get there. So for the first one, R1 is going to be T, T squared, where T goes from 0 to 1. So in here, there is no z value, so that means it's 0. So this is basically saying go along the xy, inside the xy plane. The shape of this would be a parabola. Go along that parabola until you get to where x equals 1 and y equals 1. So at the beginning, it's going to be at 0, 0, and then z is understood to be 0. By the time you get to t equals 1, it's at 1, 1, which means it's got this part right. It then needs to climb up to a z value of 1. So that's what R2 is going to do. So it's going to keep the x and the y at 1 because those are correct. And now change the z value, so that's going to be t as t ranges from 0 to 1. So basically you would walk along the ground until you get to 1, 1, and then you'd go straight up from there. So what we'll need to do is actually do two integrals and then add them together. So we would integrate, and the first one is going to go from 0 to 1. And so this one is saying x equals t, y equals t squared, and z is equal to 0, because there is no z. So that means this would be t, this would be the square root of t squared, and then minus 0 squared for the z. Then take the derivative. So this would be a 1 and square it, so that's 1. The derivative here would be 2t. Square it, that's 4t squared. Okay, so this is c1. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and finish this and get the answer, then come back and do C2, and then finally add the two answers together. 
So let's see, simplifying this a little bit, this is going to be t plus t, so that's 2t. And then the square root of 1 plus 4t squared. So for this, I could use u substitution, u equals a 1 plus 4t squared. The derivative of that is going to be 8t dt. According to this, I need a 2t, not an 8t. So I should divide this by 4 or multiply both sides by 1 fourth. So I could factor out the 1 fourth, then make the u substitution. Inside the radical, that's going to be u. And instead of radical, I'm going to put a 1 half. And then in place of 2t dt goes the 1 quarter, and then also the du. So this will be 1 quarter, and then add 1, so that's u to the 3 halves, and then divide by 3 halves, which means multiply by 2 thirds. So I could reduce, 2 would go into 4 2 times, so that leaves 1 sixth and then replace u with 1 plus 4t squared, raised to the 3 halves, and that's evaluated from 0 to 1. So let's see, when you substitute a 1, this is going to be 4 plus 1, so that's 5 raised to the 3 halves. Then when you substitute a 0, this is going to be 1 plus 0, so that's just 1 raised to the 3 halves. And then we're almost done with the first path. So then we would have 1 sixth, 5 raised to the 3 halves, there we go, minus 1. So that part is a 1.697. Okay, so now I can set that aside and now work on path two. So for path two, substitute, so using this, substitute a one for x, a one for y, and a t goes right here for the z value. So we'd have the integral, this one also goes from zero to one, and then x is going to be a 1, y is going to be a 1, and then z becomes t, and then we need the arc length. So take the derivative, which is 0, square that. The derivative, which is 0, square that. The derivative, which is 1, square that. So this one is going to go much faster because this just equals 1. So we really just need to concentrate on this part. So this is a 2 minus t squared. So the antiderivative of a 2 will be 2t. The antiderivative for t squared will be t cubed over 3. And that gets evaluated from 0 to 1. So when you substitute the 1, that's going to be 2 minus 1 third. When you substitute the 0, that's going to be 0, and that's going to be 0. So 2 minus a third would be 1 and 2 thirds or 5 thirds. Okay, now, so this was for C2. Now we need to add them together. So the integral over C for that function equals the integral C1 for that function plus the integral for C2 for that function. So let's see, I got 1.697, 1.697 plus 5 thirds, plus 5 thirds. So the grand total, 3.363. Okay, we need to do two more examples. So for example number five, integrate x plus y ds. 
that part's going to be fairly simple and straightforward. Then what makes it a little more challenging is the path is going to go from this point to this point, but along a circular path, and it needs to go in this direction. So what's the parametric equation that's going to create one quarter of a circle and the radius of this circle is two? Well, what would do that is x equals two times sine of t, y equals two times cosine of t. That way, if you have x squared plus y squared, then you would have this squared plus this squared the sine squared plus cosine squared would equal 1, and it would say x squared plus y squared equals 4. So that's going to be a circle with radius 4. Vamos a ver. If you go to y equals, and you have 2 sine of t, whoops, I need to put that for x, 2 sine of t, 2 cosine of t. And if I have it go from uh, 0 to 2 pi, and I also need to make it bigger, the screen bigger, and I'm going to speed it up by making this a point 12. Then you can see that's a circle, radius 4. But we needed to go from here to there. So let me see, if I trace, and put 0 for t, then it's starting in the right place. So it should be that this is going to be, let's see, if you have 2 pi and you cut it into four, e four quadrants, or four equal pieces, that would be pi over 2. So I think if I go from 0 to pi over 2, yes, that does it. So t goes from 0 to pi over 2. So sometimes you need to play with this to get the correct parameterization because maybe somebody said, you know what, I like cosine going first and I like sine going second. Well, that would be the same shape, but then it went the wrong direction. So if we were supposed to be going that direction, then switch the sine and the cosine. Okay, now it's going the correct direction. So this will be integrate, and then you need to have x plus y. So add these two together, 2 sine of t plus 2 cosine of t, and then for the arc length. The derivative of this is going to be 2 cosine, and then square that. So that's 4 cosine squared. The derivative right here would be negative sine, or 2 times negative sine. When you square it, it's going to become a positive 4 sine squared. And then t goes from 0 to pi over 2. So with this, you could factor out the 4, and then it would leave cosine, plus sine, cosine squared plus sine squared, which equals 1. Then take the square root of 4, so that's a 2. Then you could factor out that 2. Here also you could factor out a 2. So that means we have two 2's that are factored out. So that's actually factoring out a 4. Alright, now that we did that algebra part, factoring out the 4, now actually do the antiderivative. So the antiderivative of sine will be negative cosine. The antiderivative of cosine is sine of t, evaluated from 0 to pi over 2, and then don't forget that we factored out a 4. So cosine of pi over 2, that equals 0. Sine of pi over 2, that equals 1, minus Cosine of 0, that equals 1. Because of this, it's going to be a negative 1. And then sine of 0 is 0. So then these two little negatives are going to become positive. So there's really 1 plus 1. That equals 2 times 4. So the final answer is 8. 
And now for the last example. This would be example number six. Find the mass of a wire. that lies along this shape. In other words, this is gonna give the shape of the wire. And it's got T squared minus one for the I component, plus two T for the J component. So that right there is describing a parabola in the XY plane. So in other words, there's a piece of a line, we could even graph it right now, So it's saying the X component, oh, that glare. The X component is T, I wish it was on the X, there we go, is T squared minus one. And for the Y component, it's two T. And then in the directions, I didn't get to this part yet, but in the directions, it says T goes from zero to three. So change the window, go from zero to three, and then, so it looks like it went off the screen there. I should have the Y value go up a little bit farther. Oh, it's much bigger than I thought. Squared, so that would be three squared, that would be nine, so it's gonna go out to X is at least eight. Okay. So that right there is a piece of wire. And then we need to find out the total mass. So if the density is given by this. So its density for some reason is two times T. So basically the density function would be in like uh, pounds per whatever unit you're using for the volume. And then when you multiply that you're, and add it up, you're gonna get the mass. So the mass is gonna be, do a line integral over the curve C, which is that parabola. Then we need the density function times ds. I should have said the density function is a function of like pounds per foot. So for every foot of this wire, how many pounds is it gonna be? So this is basically saying pounds per foot times feet. Okay, so this is gonna be, let's see, it's gonna be integral from zero to three, that part was given. And then we need the density function, so that's just two times t. And then the arc length. So take the derivative of this, which would be 2t. So square that. Take the derivative here, which is going to be 2, and square that. And then integrate from 0 to 3. So with this, I could use u substitution. Let u equal the 4t squared plus 4. The derivative of that is 8t dt. This looks similar to the previous one. And then multiply both sides by 1 fourth. So this leaves 2t dt. That way it matches this exactly. And then it's going to be integrate. And this 1 fourth I could factor out. And then this is gonna become the square root of u, so u to the 1 half. And then the 2t dt will become 1 quarter du. And I already factored out the 1 quarter. So it's gonna be 1 quarter, and then add 1 to the exponent, so that's 3 halves. And divide by that, which means multiply by 2 thirds. So this is gonna be one sixth, 
and then replace the u, so that's going to be 4t squared plus 4 raised to the 3 halves, and then the limits are from 0 to 3. Let's see, when you substitute a 3, this is going to be 9 times 4, so 9 times 4 is 36, plus another 4, that's 40. So there's 1 sixth, and then 40 gets raised to the 3 halves, minus, when you substitute a 0, that's just going to be 4 raised to the 3 halves. So the final answer is 1 sixth, and then 40 gets raised to the 3 halves, minus 4 gets raised to the 3 halves. So the final answer is 40.83.